Okay, I think I think we can slowly start this opening panel. So welcome everybody to the this opening panel of the sixth edition of the Showcase Festival and Conference Ment Ljubljana. Uh, I know that you are all of you waiting for 7 p.m. Well, a huge when a huge party will start up upstairs, but till then we will have some boring discussion on boring topic and this topic is called attention here comes Hemi we wanted to make it like you know like uh, when uh, the, the UFO is coming and everybody's like that what the fuck is this now so we, we wanted to put it like okay Hemi or something like a UFO something like something is coming on the planet earth and we are, we are really curious about what that is and uh, what is the purpose the objection of this so uh, uh, at the beginning I have to say I have four really 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 wonderful people here we spent the whole week actually last week uh, in Athens working on not just what we're gonna discuss today more things of course but we really had good times and I have to say thank you guys to be here in Ljubljana and thank you to have a chance to promote Hemi for the first time here in Ljubljana, which is my hometown. Thanks, guys. So we will start with a short introduction of ourselves. Uh, I will be the first because I would like to give an example of what short means. So I'm Peter Barosh, I'm from Ljubljana. I work for Slovenian Music Information Center, which is proud partner of Hemi. And uh, as uh, music Information Center, which is quite old-fashioned form of organization, which was much more useful, let's say, 20 years ago, um, when the time of internet was not that much popular, pop popular like today it is. Uh, and now we are challenging the fact that we would like, we need to transform ourselves, uh, to upgrade ourselves so, to something like we usually call music expert office. So, yeah, this is from my side. Maya, please. Okay. So, hello, my name is Maya Wapuszyńska and I'm from uh, Krakow, Poland. Uh, now I'm working for the Krakow Festival Office, uh, which is an uh, institution which organizes around five to seven festivals uh, per year uh, for different genres of music, not only uh, the showcases, but also the early music days, uh, the classical and a lot of different stuff. I'm also working as a production for uh, the other festivals in Poland, such as Off Festival, Opener Festivals, uh, for uh, Orange Warsaw Festivals, and so many different, like a Snowfest Festival, for example. So there's a lot of stuff uh, to go on. Uh, and I will pass it to Martin. Or Georgia. Yeah, okay, sorry. Okay, girls first. Hi, my name is Goriano. No, no, it was not God first, it was me. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, I'm Goriana. I'm coming from uh, Macedonia, uh, from Skopje, and I've, uh, I'm working the past two years for Password Production, which is a music production company, and uh, mainly it's responsible for uh, creating the biggest uh, music and crea uh, creative festivals in our country which are the festival, Taxi Rat Festival and the Queen Music Conference. So I've been working on uh, creative programming and production in all of them. And uh, basically also Password is working as a booking agency, as a touring agency and um, works with artist development too. So basically we are working a lot and many different things. So now my... Okay. Um, hello everyone, it's really great to be here and it is an honor uh, to come back to, to Man. Well, uh, long, t long story short. You cannot, you cannot, last I know century. that you cannot make short. So. No, 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 I'm the, I'm the Hungarian minority from uh, Zizhkov uh, district of Prague. Uh, I used to work for the Hungarian Music Export Office to, quite a long time ago and at other uh, organizations and then I moved to Prague and I'm the head of uh, Soundcheck which is the Czech Music Export Office. Um, we have uh, lots of programs, some you will see tomorrow, the reception at 12 o'clock, sorry, <laughs> the teaser. Uh, and uh, I'm also the director of Nouvelle Prague Conference and Showcase Festival. 
and you are a partner in Jump Music Market Accelerator? Yes, but I would not like to confuse totally everyone <laughs> at this point. Okay, hi everyone again, I'm George, I'm half French, half Greek, I could say a French immigrant in South, which is quite rare. I'm uh, the coordinator and the national uh, founder of the Music Day Network, which is a network of 55 cities in Greece, mostly based on putting grassroots talents and emerging artists close to the uh, audience. I'm also uh, in charge with many of us here of the International Association, which in uh, Slovenia is Praznik Lasbe, in Poland is Vianki, in Hungary is Zene Unepe, in Greece is Jordis Muskis, in France is Fête de la Musique. Uh, I'm also the founder and curator of the Athens Music Week, a, a brand new, let's say, something in between a, a Music Week and a Showcase Conference. And uh, that's it more or less. And I'm here today very happy as well because with, we've been many of us many times in Ljubljana. Uh, first time for me in Ment. I think it's great already, perfect size, perfect geographic uh, focus, which is something important for us. And I'm here as Hemi Project Coordinator. So we'll speak about this UFO, UFO, sorry. Thank you, guys. So now the main question, actually. What the hell Hemi is? I think this is wondering. People are wondering about that a lot. And uh, maybe you, George, as a supreme mastermind of this idea, Hemi, can give us a really proper explanation about that. Well, I thought about it since uh, the discussion we had a few minutes ago. <laughs> Well, I think the context is great. We all are friends here for years. Many of you are friends for years. And, well, we realized after losing so much money, friends, uh, girlfriends, usually divorce, blah, 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 you know, parents saying you should change work, etc. We realized we were meeting every year for years. And usually we were meeting to go to, like, overseas, go to France, go to UK, to go to Glastonbury, go to Ripperband to meet them, which is great. Honestly, it's nice. But how come we never meet within our countries? Okay, with exceptions, men, et etc. Et but I mean, in general, what is the problem? So we realize that the problem is just historical. I mean, we have countries which are not so much developed, let's say, which is okay, let's go over it. And what is missing? Well, everything. We have the professionals, we have the sound, we have many musicians, but we don't have structures from our states. We have geographical, I mean, try to make touring showcase from Greece or to Cyprus by boat to go to go over Europe or from Estonia, you know what I mean, where you are like uh, Martin's countries, you can go everywhere, but anyway, so we realized all those differences and, uh, you know, there is this uh, PIN conference where we, was, we were, sorry, two years ago, all of us, Creative Europe, are we eligible, wow, well, it's for big countries, anyway, we took the challenge and we said, okay, there's a difference. CSE countries, we said, could be countries which have more or less the same needs at the moment. And let's make simply a focus on everything that is happening elsewhere in Europe. So many good events, efforts from Europe, Live Europe, uh, I don't know, MA, uh, Ines, uh, Jump, so many programs which usually do not have countries from our countries. I mean, they don't have partners from our countries. Not because the other ones don't want us, because usually we're not strong enough financially, etc., etc., to do it. So Hemi is here. We found uh, uh, the idea of trying to make not an horizontal network, and I think, well, most of, most of all those topics will be tackled later, but Hemi means hub for the exchange of music innovation, which in English is not really proper. But, you know, we checked on Google. We wanted to find something for an acronym. We didn't want to have Europe inside. Again, we love Europe, but no offense, you know? And, uh, and Hemi was born. Hemi as a hemisphere, Hemi as, uh, in Greek we say, Hemi is the half, means hemisphere, you know, Hemi. And when you have half an idea, you already have an idea. Then we found that it's a motor engine from Ford. And a friend from Macedonia said, that's what we need. We need a motor, okay? <laughs> so Hemi, the acronym, and uh, nine countries, 10 partners, which is pretty crazy for a European project. Usually, usually you go with five, six, and very ambitious. Is it okay for an intro? Of course not. We would like to hear something more. I think this is a time, or maybe we can we can move forward and get it back on the second, I mean third, let's call it third part of our discussion. Okay, good for now. So uh, when I was thinking about Hemi, and when I was thinking about all those initiatives, 
made by European commissions, uh, commission that I'm sure that you all, all of you, I'm, I'm sure you have heard about uh, Music Moves Europe and all this stuff, which will probably bring quite a lot of, a lot of new money in the European music market. And I was wondering, okay, that's cool, but um, will this money go to the countries which already have the money, or they will actually deal with countries which are probably not at the same level of development of music market, of development uh, of the educational level uh, of musicians and music professionals. Uh, you know, very simple it is. When you have data, then you actually have very good opportunity to speak with policy makers. When you don't have data, you have a problem. And this is kind of problem that we in Slovenia have. So uh, the next part of this discussion should be a little bit more uh, countries. So, so something, some details about uh, countries that we are coming from. And we, we are actually, we are rep representing very huge uh, territory of Europe. We have Greece, we have not much, sorry, Macedonia, not, not uh, sorry, Macedonia. Uh, we have Hungary and Czech Republic, we have huge Poland, and we have one small Slovenia. Uh, and when I'm thinking about Slovenia, I can tell you I live in a country with actually no vision. I can't remember when was the last time that our government uh, stood for the whole circle of four years. I really cannot remember that. I can name only three persons that were important in developing, let's say, the public goods in this territory. And first one was um, Napoleon, do you remember? Short guy from France. Uh, the second one was uh, Maria Theresia from Habsburg monarchy. And the third one was mighty Tito, the leader of Yugoslavia. And after that, I don't know. I cannot name a person with some vision, with some ambition, with some clear big picture where we would like to move. Uh, so that's why I'm really happy that something like Hemi um, wow. came. Really? Really? Yeah, a big thing for me, a really big one. And, and I would like to know something about, I, I mean, we would like to know something about uh, why, uh, before we start to think about why we need Hemi, I would like to ask you a couple of questions regarding situation, uh, situations in your countries. For example, you, Goriana, you're coming from a land of eternal sunshine, as you call it, from a land with beautiful girls, land with amazing food, amazing, excellent rakia. But on the other side, maybe the political, I'm talking about culture, I'm talking about music, because this is our topic. Can you say something about that? Yes, and you forgot big mountains. So that's why we are a bit... You have mountains, really? Yes. But no ski, skier in the World Cup, right? No. Ah, that's why I forgot. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Just freestyle <laughs> So uh, the question... Yeah, tell us something about Macedonia. Tell us something, what is Popesword doing there? Uh, what kind of obstacles are you facing? What kind of issues? What, you know, tell us something about it. Yeah, so uh, basically Password is a private company, which means uh, that it's self-financed because uh, most of the institutional calls that are on a yearly basis are uh, few and they are also supplying up to 1,000 applications. So that's how the politics works. And they don't choose, for example, maybe few big and good projects. They need to supply all of them with smaller amounts. So what we get, it's, it's nothing compared to the expenses that we have in creating big, big festivals such as the festival. And um, that's why we are having this hardship in, uh, in financing, but from institutions. And uh, the way we should do it, it's like uh, we collaborate with a lot of embassies. We collaborate, we are all also applying on uh, yearly EU calls. So that's why for us it's very important that Creative Europe uh, actually wants to fund and wants to invest in the Balkan region and not only in the whole of Europe because that's pointless. I mean, it's not pointless, it's much more needed here so we can get developed. 
Uh, and uh, what we are doing, uh, first of all, it's not mainly commercial. I mean, of course, we want to do commercial things because those things earn money, but our main goal and vision and idea is to educate. Because if we educate people, if we give them uh, opportunity to hear and to understand culture more deeply, then we can grow generations that are uh, that have that, that seed in them and then they can also bring change in the future and they can understand that that's important and they can work in that sector and that's how we can grow the sector. So today we are working towards that. Most of our events are very, very uh, cheap. So I think we have the most cheap ticket for festival in the whole Europe for three days. Go there. Yeah, for, for three days festival uh, with a camp, uh, our ticket was 10 euros for nine years. Since last year we changed it in, to 15 euros because we are afraid that people won't come if we put ticket of 30 euros. So we are afraid, we, we just don't do that. Because we want everybody to come and everybody to feel that freedom of music festival and to be um, fed with that art, you know? And that's why we keep it low and people come. We, people come, we see growth in numbers, uh, and we are quite uh, satisfied with that. So basically we are not working in order to earn big, big amounts of money. We have other resources in doing that, like bookings and renting ourselves as production company. But the art that we are doing, mainly we are doing so we can uh, educate and bring people together. And not just this, actually, your PIN conference, which is something similar like MENT, for example, uh, you have no tickets for uh, a for conference part, right? Or, or a festival at all, I don't know. Tell, explain us to them. Well, we started PIN uh, also because of that, so we can, um, we can show uh, the audience there that there is something uh, like a showcase, that there is something like fresh and new music, not only commercial music, and we wanted to bring more and more young people to also be educated in the music in the art of music business, so they can understand that there is also uh, music production, there is also, uh, you know, branches of that, like uh, booking and all of that, so we can interest people to be more involved. And yes, been, basically it's free, everybody can come, everybody can listen to the conference, everybody can see the showcase, so we attract thousands of young people during the, the night for the concerts, and we are still struggling to bring them also to the to the day conference, but we are we are getting there. I, I, my, from my perspective, because I'm really crazy about pink conference, and I go there for five years now every year, uh, and I see that uh, the amount of local musicians on the conference part of your program is growing. The number is growing. I, I, I think I have a feeling that every year there are more people who join the conference program. So yeah. they, they want to be educated, they want to meet somebody new. Yeah, because throughout the year we also work with them. So throughout the year we also um, promote the event and we also bring all of those people that are interested to our offices. So we explain to them what's the, po what's the point we pick like artists that are really uh, talented, they, that, that they want to work in the future and we also you know, explain them about everything, that it's very important to network, to come and you know, to be, to to be a bit, you know, outside, and we try to to like bridge those barriers, those borders, because people are a bit scared of going outside, outside of Macedonia, because it has big mountains. <laughs> and that's key. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you, Goriana. Uh, now you said ladies first, so I think we can continue with Maya now. Uh, well, Maya, you're coming from Krakow. Uh, you are part of. Uh, Krakowski Bureau Festival, is that yes, correct? So my correct. Polish is wow, good. I'm perfect. good in Polish, yes, right? I'm okay, thank you. Uh, so I was really fascinated by the fact. Actually, I realized how big Poland is when I found out that you have an official public organization like Bureau of Festivals. Yes. So Which is, sorry, just to finish it, I, I would like to make some point, because in Slovenia we have no kind of associations, no, no association, formal, informal, between, let's say, music producers, uh, let's say, labels. I mean, we have some of them, but I'm afraid that they are not really 
workable and active ones. So, so yeah, that's why I'm so interesting. How come that we are not talking now about Krakow? Not? We don't talk about Polish Biroc festivals. We are talking about Krakow ones. So explain us this okay. huge thing of Poland. So this is a, a big difference. So uh, Krakow was the capital of Poland, and I may say freely that it's uh, one of uh, the main growing uh, capital of culture in our country. And our office is uh, founded by the city council, so we're working closely with the city of Krakow, but we are not a part of the city of Krakow. So we're an independent organization, which is uh, focusing mostly on the cultural goals for the city and for the region of uh, Małopolska, and we're working closely together with Katowice, which is the city next to our uh, Krakow. And I think what we're doing really great over there is so uh, we're trying to establish the local community, we're trying to help uh, local um, roots, or local bands, local, local uh, education system uh, in the music parts. And what we're trying also to do is combine the um, DYU uh, movement from such as Tech Miasto, which is another partner of uh, HEMI. Uh, to grow and to develop, and by this fact, we also created together with the five different cities in Poland an uh, incubator for uh, grassroots bands that helped. That was a week of workshops in five different cities in Poland. There was uh, Łódź, uh, there was uh, Warsaw, as far as I remember, and many more involved in it. And uh, the bands from the specific uh, cities uh, can go to the five different uh, workshops team and it was uh, founded by a city council also in every single city. So I think like this idea of uh, helping the music sector in Poland is still growing but we're not yet there when we're supposed to be. Yeah, so can you mention some issues? We are talking not about the bad part, so uh, is there anything that you see as... Uh, yes, so of course there is. So we're, uh, if you're sp speaking about the Krakow, we are such a huge organization that a lot of smaller festivals and a lot of smaller organizers of, from the music sector is complaining that we're a monopoly for the region, which might be true, but in fact we're doing our best to to be a platform for sharing, for networking, to uh, co for cooperation between the festivals, to cooperation between different branches, uh, to cooperate between music and the film, to and between literature. So uh, we are spending public money, which is really hard to do. And if any of you ever have a chance to work with the public funds know how hard it is to to go with the grants and we're living it on a daily basis so uh, our world is mostly bureaucracy but we're doing our best to support uh, the young bands and the music roots from the region thank you well Martin now it's your turn um, in fact uh, you reminded me let me start first please uh, you reminded me, do not speak like we are coming from underdeveloped countries because we are at the moment we are trying to boost something which is, has already been done. Uh, well, I was, I'm still thinking that I'm coming from underdeveloped country. Sorry. But I would like to hear your position now because the, let, let me make more precise question. You was the one, you was part of the team who established the music expert office in Budapest. Then it collapsed. Then you moved to Czech Republic and make this story again. So it's very, it's very interesting to me how did you or do you deal with policy makers and other stakeholders, how they understand the idea that something like this is necessary. But we are speaking about two different countries in two different ages, so... Yeah, but it's true. I anyway, you are experienced. You can make something out. Okay. Um, I will make something out. I hope. Okay. Um, well, um, 2004... So actually, who? It's a really long story, and I try to... Okay, maybe try you to, can focus to, on Czech Republic uh, Try to make it, like, uh, smaller. 
like a shorter. Uh, the most important difference in between what happened uh, actually 15 years ago in Hungary, and that's pretty much the same, uh, what I think that must have been in Czech Republic as well, is that um, uh, the music sector, you can call it industry, um, I don't want to offend anyone because we have also this discussion if it's art or if it's business and so on. But uh, however, it was not at the level as it is now, meaning that um, uh, export offices are usually working with a, with a sector uh, that has uh, backing, meaning that you already have professionals, you have musicians, you have many things already there. But uh, in these countries, it wasn't. So that means that uh, uh, 15 years ago in Hungary, actually, uh, we had to face that slowly. So when we started, it was more about the different aspects of music export. One is the more uh, soft policy aspect, when, when you're going to different events and wave the flag and show that, oh yes, we have this, 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 this not just the politicians, so that's more for the foreign ministries and so on. And uh, the other aspect, which is the most important, uh, what actually moves me personally as well, is uh, to create a system that can provide the people from the music sector, uh, let's be it uh, from musicians to technicians to the professionals, so on, a sustainable living. How do you do that? Is that you have education, you create basically professions and so on. So, but I'm getting back to the music export. The export, uh, originally, it does the, when it was started in many of the so-called developed countries, it helped actually the businesses to connect and to develop much more and to gain uh, recognition and also finance this for the countries and also connect, of course, the countries. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, but uh, it was then, but now we are doing the both. So we are educating as well. So we have different workshops. We work on to uh, uh, structureize the, the Czech system, the Czech music sector, to help. We are not doing it, but we are trying to nurture it, to have associations for festivals, associations for uh, help to, to work with musicians, uh, association for clubs, and so on. Uh, because those are uh, the, the engine. And then I go back to, to this comment that I had, actually, about we were running around to different events for ages, and that's why I'm telling to, to, to change the story, because 15 years ago the story was like, oh yeah, here we are from uh, Eastern Europe, you know? And everyone looked at us like, oh yeah, come on, <laughs> you're still working at the field somewhere, so okay, go home, then you know, you're not at our level. But that, that was absolutely a different story, so absolutely, please forget it. We have clubs in all of these countries, has really good clubs, has also management and so on. Not already at that level, the meaning is to, to forget the story and start standing on a much more solid ground and, and use this collaboration we are about to speak, Hemi, to boost it, to help, to connect ourselves. And um, yeah, basically, that was, a, I hope I could answer the question. I well, should I, did, several in the Did area. you get something? <laughs> did you get it? I think we do. Thanks. Thanks, Martin. Almighty George. Well. I don't know if I can say that, but for me you are quite pretty big animal regarding clubbing, Brussels, Creative Europe, you know the guys, you know the people, and you know the associations, and can you, and you're in the, I wanted to say funny fact, well somehow it's funny, you're half French, right? Which is not really funny, but because you don't know the story behind, about, can you tell us, what that means being a big Western, big Western music market, how that looks like. Well, it's what we all understand here at this table, that you can be complex about it, you can be sad about it, you can compare it, you can do the man's uh, game, you know, uh, on the table. Fact is, when you sell carpets, when you, when you buy something, if there is quantity, you have best prices, and everybody knows that, so except for all the historical reasons, the colony countries like France. You know, we say in France that uh, England left something at least in the colonies. Okay? So, don't have to say anything else. Also, I have some Moroccan blood, because my grandma was from Morocco, so... Well, my, fa my grandfather married an indigen, as we used to call Moroccan people not so long ago in France. So, yes, and being from France and Greece helped me to understand that 
complex thing. My mother was saying, yeah, the Occidentals, you are American bastards. My father was saying, yeah, you Greek uh, schmucks, uh, you were with the donkeys five years ago and now you are in Santorini. Okay. And now, except for all that, there are mentalities. We had Turks for 400 years. Uh, we had Ottomans. We had, we had French. Had uh, uh, Swedish. Had uh, public schools in uh, 1500. Okay, we have 3,000 civilization, but we, it's 3,000 years we fight with each other. French fight with the other countries, not within. So anyway, so it's terms of percentage. So one other thing, let's say, to add to Martin that I realized also very soon because Greece is not a small, a big country. It was very ill, as you all know, recently. It still is, but it's much better. Now we are just Europeans like everyone. We have 20% poor people, normal. 30% average, normal and 10% that have everything. Anyway, um, the thing is, there are no structures. It's not only if we have clubs or not. Yes, we have the professionals, all of us, but we don't have associations. You said about that at the beginning. France, maybe some of you know, uh, when there was that big American, uh, European huge contract that they wanted to sign, the commercial contract, I don't remember the name. It's not so long ago. So everything was okay before Trump, it was with Obama. The only country saying, okay on everything but not on culture. Culture, you don't tell us what to do. Culture, we want to finance culture. So it happened suddenly for me to understand that when France did, for example, Praznik Lasbe, Fête de la Musique, which if you don't know, it's 20,000 free concerts in the city, everyone, blah, 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 for 30 years. What was behind it explains how these countries worked and it's not wrong or, or bad, it's cool. They say, okay, we want to have the French, French baguettes, we want to, people to know France, so how do we do this? Culture, culture is one way. Do we do it for free? No, we get money back. How do we get money back? Well, we don't have to sell enough French-speaking music, so we can be a country to host foreigners. So they brought Cesare Evora, Rachita, Marcus Miller. I can tell you hundreds of names, which are not French, but it's French products. So it goes to Sassem, etc., etc. They have ministries for that, they have a policy for that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the main difference. And there are 70 millions almost in France, and when you have France, you have the French-speaking countries, so it's another 5 millions from Belgians, and it's another 3 millions from Switzerland, it's Quebec, then the next big continent is Africa, half of it speaks French, so that's policy. And then you have Greece, which, you know, yes, we were with the donkeys 50 years ago, so... We also have another problem, like many countries in this area of the Balkans, we have music industry. What is music industry, dude? Is it um, English speaking? No, we have turbo folk. We have our own music. And we laugh about them, but they sell to Romania, they sell to Israel, they sell to Lebanon. So when we do our own kind of conferences as well, education, I would say training for us, because education is even so yes, it's not comparable, but it's okay, that's the way it is. And at the end, if we want to understand how to change something, we know we don't have the capital, we don't, we don't have the structure. So what we try is to do what we do, and what many of you did, to be at least two or three together, and to try to do some things, because we also have in Greece the geographical problem. I mean, to go from Athens to Thessaloniki is 600 kilometers, and the gas price in Greece with the crisis, I mean, it's cheaper to go to Milano than to go to Thessaloniki. Did I answer the question? I think you did. Okay. Thank you. So the point of this part of conversation was actually, I hope that you realize it, uh, I did, because uh, you know when I'm uh, complaining about all the situations and troubles in my own country to somebody from abroad, then he actually look, looks at me and says, come on man, it's the same everywhere. We have the same problems everywhere. Also the Western countries, has have a lot of similar things, maybe on the higher level, more bigger numbers, but anyway, I think we... Yeah, of course. Well, I just want to say that they have another competition. We have competition because we, they have competition because there's more competition, and yeah. yeah, they have also other problems, different, but at the end it's the same, in fact. So, uh, this, actually the last part of our conversation before we turn to you, and uh, you can slowly start to prepare your questions and comments. They are very welcome. Uh, when I was thinking about Hemi, I mean, if I were you sitting there and thinking about Hemi, aha, another one, uh, network, another one, European 
money sucking project which will do something specific and then just disappear or whatever. We are actually thinking about something else, right? You actually mentioned that, but you know, when I started to realize, okay, I'm work for Music Information Center. I'm uh, in the board of YAMIC, the Worldwide Association of Music Information Centers. Maya, we don't need to even mention that she is working for collaborating thing. Marton is part also the board member of EMEE, the Association of Music Expert Offices. Pink Conference is, for example, member of Ines Network. George is do, doing European Music Day. Uh, they, Maya did it, I do it, uh, does it, sorry, <laughs> uh, I do that. So we are all, all together and other mem members also. Uh, we, are, we are already playing, let's say, important part in different networks. And as I see, HEMI is something which can horizontally collaborate with many of them. And now this is some kind of an open discussion between us, what HEMI can do. Who will start? We play the game. We play the game you taught us to, to, to say. <laughs> okay. So, yes, let's go a bit more concrete. You. The aim was a, a bit, I think, now to show you that there's no complex to have, there are difficulties to face, there are solutions, and we hope all together that HEMI will bring another one, and it will lead also and will pave the way so that other organizations do it as well, do uh, projects with the EU. Let's hope the EU will continue and uh, uh, increase those budgets, but concretely. So yes, there are many, many nice uh, European projects happening in most of the EU countries, uh, between Estonia until Greece. At the moment, we have, uh, we told you, Estonia, or the Partners Music Estonia, many of you know them, I guess, and they work with Tallinn Music Week. You go south, we have two partners in Krakow, the 2IY, as Maya was saying, which, again, as Martin and, Ma and Goriana were saying, we invite you all, and that's the idea, to many showcase conferences to go and meet friends in the other side of Europe, slowly, slowly. So, Hemi thought about, okay, let's focus on some things, we cannot focus on everything, it's a four million grant, two million grant, and two million that the, all the partners are putting together. Uh, the idea was a cluster. We all spoke about the sector, so we didn't want to do uh, one horizontal network of festivals, or of venues, or of uh, showcase festivals. We thought if we want to help professionals, if we want to bridge venues between our countries, what do we actually aim to do? Well, the wish is that we will pave the way so that we create a market for our markets within our market. First part. When this is done, which will take some time, obviously, in the meantime, we all are connected, as all of you, with Western, Occidental? Occidental. <laughs> Sorry, Western, it's us, yes. We are all connected with Occidental Europe, so if we manage to do a brand, a trademark of our countries, we will also do a win-win partnership and collaborate with others. How do we do that? Well, we thought that Martin could speak about one of the aspects of the project, one of the deliverables that the European Union is saying, one of the activities HEMI will do for four years, which under the name Incubator, will tackle a few things about professional of the music industry mainly, and which segments, Martin? Okay. Um, yes. Uh, I will go from a different direction, but uh, I, I get that exactly. Thank you. Uh, Guys, also I'll give you two minutes for this. Okay, okay. Uh, also to add that uh, on behalf of Nobel Prize, because I'm as the conference director there, we are also part of INES, um, just to add uh, as a viewpoint. Uh, the other, as a viewpoint of, of uh, showcase conferences, when you're doing conference or showcase festival, what is the goal? Why are you, why are you doing it? Uh, and then I'm going back to the, to the incubation. Um, I see it uh, at many conferences that the, the best conference, what, how, or how I imagine actually, of course, you imagine your own, uh, is that to be a really effective connecting point on different level, meaning people coming there to make connections, make businesses, make uh, find bands, uh, book bands, A and and so on. So from that example, I can I can. Uh, basically draft what I can imagine as of an incubator, because we would like to see labels that are picking up bands from, from, from our uh, showcase festivals. We would like to see 
and not that many labels are there because the, in the region there are not that many at that level, so they really need the help. Uh, we would need to have managements that are going there, not that many managements. I can actually go through on these examples. Uh, what we see, there are more and more musicians coming in because we have the, the, the different educational parts, but the musicians are just one part of it, and, and Korean, I can speak about that in, in two minutes. Uh, one. One, oh, sure. <laughs> okay. So uh, then there are the, but uh, very, very important, we don't really have too many of the live music industry professionals because that's also something to be developed. Uh, incubation. Uh, or training or VET or you can you can call it however you like is to basically mentor people to to get all the knowledge and all the all the connecting points and then and when when you speak about it it sounds much more of a complicated something uh, than if you just practically go there so what we're also doing as export office we, we create like networking session and link professionals and, and help professionals to explain okay that's the reason you do it and you do it because you have a vision. To get that vision and, and map it out and, and create a strategy for yourself that I have a band, I want to get there. That's my vision. These are the people, these are in five years. That's what I could do. You're not a sellout if you do that. You just try to make a living. So I think that this is another point that we have to keep in mind. If you do it, you're not a sellout. You are making a job finally. And I, I will stop here. I, I suppose that will And you will give the microphone to Corena, right? Yeah, so as I was saying before, that uh, basically we are having artists all, all throughout the year coming to our office and asking for advice. So we are basically working with them and sometimes for them to export them. So HEMI is something that will help us, like a tool that we can offer them even more visibility. Why? Because we are connecting with these nine countries in the region and they all have their events, they all have their showcases that they can go and play there so they can be connected to the, to the they can be exported actually and they can finally play outside, not in Macedonia but outside and see what it's like. They can also get more uh, more educated and more uh, they can get specific trainings in what they're interested in how they can make money at the end from their from their music and their art and uh, what we also have uh, the Hemi Hemi award uh, of the can I say that <laughs> Well, yes, this is a so surprise, right. surprise thing, and people are curious. So, like, yeah, well, we, we have numbers to give. We have numbers to give. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, the the Hemi Award of of, of the artist uh, Hemi Award, which will be something that we, we are going to to award, of course, artists. <laughs> but i I don't know if I can say. Doesn't matter. All of these things are going to be offered to the artists and uh, that would be some kind of an award. Yeah, and I can add, because we are in the same working yeah. group with Corina, that actually the point of this award is uh, to find a way how to make a selection. So we will choose artists which will really have proper support. We still don't know, many, many questions still are there, but in some way we are looking on the way to make a proper support to selected band to see if they can simply make it, or you can add. Something. Well, uh, I'll 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 take the the, the numbers as as we said, because as Martin said, it's not underdeveloped; it's in development. Uh, it's not we don't know. Is we want to see what where is the best focus we can do, and maybe let's let's put the three topics then together, as the one that Martin initiated. So we have some main goals, otherwise you don't win a proposal from the European Union. So in terms of the language, let's say in our own language, what we wanted to do was a, a theme where we could support music professionals which have companies, small ones, micro-sized, one person as most of us, okay, in anything related to the life sector. Let's make it roughly, okay? Uh, when you have a project like this, you cannot help everyone, and we thought it's not about help. What can we do? Can we give some money for somebody to go to Mend to uh, to all the showcases? How many showcases do we have? Five. Okay. Can what what can we do? So the idea of incubator is that for three years, starting uh, with a call that will happen this year in Nouvelle Prague, end of October, 
we will have the chance to invite 120 companies from booking, management, labels, uh, people who want to create a festival. We will have the opportunity to invite 120 persons to join a team of experts, of professionals, which together will try to make some networking and to help those persons either expand their existing job, either create a project. Okay? I think I don't have to develop more. The idea is this will do three phases. The first phases will be those 120 persons. They will be the call every year, starting in 2020. And by January, uh, we'll have chosen those 120 to try and help, and then to filter, because of course, you cannot help 120 companies. We don't have the money of, uh, I don't know who's rich in Slovenia, but of a rich guy anyway. So the second batch will be that actually aiming to do something holistic, what, why do I say holistic? Because there are many good ideas already and projects helping companies, you know, either to pitch. So it's that level of knowledge and you want to go there. Either to create a business plan, either to get contact. So we, what we want for those 120 is to find 30 and really support them in kind, meaning offering promotions, communication, traveling, etc., etc., etc. And from those 30, a third batch, the last one, will win the HEM Innovation Award, we can talk about the name, which we haven't decided yet uh, all the details, so you excuse us, you'll stay in tune and you will soon uh, get more. The second part is music. You want to say the details for music? Uh, how do we plan all this with the 360 part, the music award? Do you think it's the proper time to discuss it? I mean, yes, I think we can say the names now. I mean, at least okay. the idea of the calls. So I can give you a word. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yes, as you understand, we did a cluster. So we have conferences, but we have also festivals. Most of the companies here are producing many festivals per year. And it's not one single kind of festival. There are festivals in castles, festivals in public spares, uh, festivals in small venues in the winter, and big venues in the winter. We have a partner called Exit. Maybe you know, you know, it's a festival in Novi Sad. We have, uh, we have many partners. So again, we thought, what can we do for musicians and for bands? We have all the people working with export offices. We're trying for years to send bands to the uh, uh, Occidental Festival. So we said, okay, let's try to circulate musicians, first of all, also between us. How come we don't have Slovenian bands in Serbia? How come we don't have Hungarian bands in Greece? How come, how come, how come? So we will ho more or less network, bridge from small venues in the winter till big festivals in the summer. We will connect this again with a kind of export path, uh, path for professionalization and internationalization of musicians. There will be a call also for that, there will be a selection. And we have an idea to try and, and again continue with those bands, not only by bringing them to a festival, but to like make a kind of friendly agreement and continue with them by trading those uh, artists, if possible, connecting them with others. That's the number we don't know. We know it's, it could be from 70 bands to 50 bands during three years, more or less. And uh, that's it for the musicians, I think. Do I forgive? Yes, yeah, Maya, please. Yeah, I like think something? like when we'll wrap it up and sum it up, it's all about the philosophy of the project and who is Hemi for. So uh, I think to short notice, it's like it's professionals of the music market for the professionals of the music market. So we've got three pillars. It's educational, export, and networking. And we will do it, we'll, we're planning to do it on a different levels. So first of all, we're trying to educate each other between our organization, between our festivals, uh, between our conferences to move uh, our knowledge to the other parts of the world uh, of the CSIE region. And this is the first level. And on the second level is when we will be big enough in our region, between our partners and between our countries, then we'll go to the east, to the west. So we will see, we will show them that we're also big, we're, we can do it much more better than them, and we're really good at what we're doing. And we want to go to the moon after. <laughs> yes. I think and it's important to look at uh, the numbers, just quick, really short uh, sum up of this. Uh, the 10 partners, uh, 9 countries, 110 million people. 
if you look from Estonia to Greece, there are 150 million uh, people inhabitant area uh, of music market that actually not really developed uh, in terms of there's no internal uh, circulation. Uh, the other point I just wanted to add uh, that <clears throat> Uh, it's kind of a multilateral network because you know all the horizontal networks, networks of uh, showcase festivals, networks of festivals, networks of managers and so on. The point is uh, to link these steps from the beginning to the, to, till the end. So we have the possibility to educate and we have the possibility to already link the ones that are already active. Uh, by this it creates a market, a market that is really visible for the ones who looked at you, if you're coming from Slovenia and or or us, and like, okay, so, um, well, it just doesn't pay to work with you guys because you're so small, so you cannot offer anything. But if you go there as a network, it's absolutely a different story, and it's again, it's a different story uh, when you're speaking about uh, X countries that are already having. Uh, music market initiated. So the point is to boost the internal music market to help everyone to grow to the level that it actually creates an explosion when we're going outside. And don't imagine it's one year. It's not one year. The 50-70 band is four years. So this has, of course, a, a proper strategy. timeline and a strategy how to build it. So uh, if you look at it at once, it's really threatening and a kind of a mess of ideas, but it's not actually. If it's spread out, of four years, that's an absolutely different story we are speaking about. Thank you. So now the question for you, mentals. Sorry, I always call people <laughs> men mentals. I'm the mental. Hello, I'm Peter I'm the mental. Uh, would you like to spend another one hour discussing Hemi, or you are already thinking about tasting the best Slovenian beer after? Okay, beer. It's, we have time now for some questions. Yeah. Hi. Hi. So I'm a music uh, journalist from Serbia and I'm, I'm doing as a promoter also, so a lot of stuff, it doesn't matter. My question for all of you, because I've worked with um, bands from Macedonia, so maybe for Goriana and for all of you. Uh, what can we do to help Hemi and uh, spread the network? Because we brought uh, Bernice Propaganda, we brought uh, Balkan Veliki to smaller towns in Serbia and they did really good uh, concerts. So now when they make tours, they are coming to much smaller towns because they know there is an audience which is going to come. So me as a music journalist, do you have any use of my information from the field? What can we do? I mean, what can I do for your project because I like the idea? Well, uh, you can give us your email and your phone number at the end of the meeting to start with because we have also a, a part of Hemi which is, we call it, don't say it, okay, yet. It's the digital part where we want to record and make a kind of library of all the conferences, of interviews uh, from Serbians. With maybe we will manage to do also if it's native uh, language to make translation. Anyway, the library part is we have planned at the moment ten multiplier events. It means that all the partners will meet in ten partners every year for the next four years. We'll you'll see our faces. We'll see your faces. All of us will see faces for the next four years in. Niche, uh, sorry, Novi Sad, uh, Ljubljana, uh, uh, Bucharest, uh, Budapest, uh, Prague, Athens, etc., and so on and so on and so on. That's one thing. With the incubator and all this, when we speak about a community, the idea is, in fact, to exchange news also. So we all agreed to pay real journalists to take events from all of us, but to kind of create a community everyone will have to present other partners from each country and we want to create a kind of news channel of the music of our countries because there are so many events as martin said one by one except for exit for example there are exceptions everywhere okay but one by one it's not enough to compete other countries all together if we generate a market so that's the joy we have from eu if we didn't have the money we could not do it who would dare to do this are you crazy but if you have the money without competing each other, if you give content inside, proper content, you know, from men, from Reaper Band, from Eurosonic, from uh, Tallinn Music Week, there will be a trademarking slowly, slowly for all our friends from uh, Western uh, countries. And thus, we thought we need to create a kind of think tank. 
So we want to bring venues, festival, extra to us with some budget we have to pay for the expenses and the idea except our traveling is to put, as Martin was saying, people from each country to meet again as well. That's how you know, slowly, slowly. So journalist content is a key point we also want to tackle on the platform, let's say. Thank you, George. Uh, just to know you guys, we would like to finish like Germans do on time. So it's 9 o'clock, 19 o'clock, sorry, 7. Uh, I think we can slowly finish the discussion. Is there any really, 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 really important question that you have to ask right now? No questions, because she will kill you. If not, you are very welcome to give us some inputs. We will be here at main, you will you know our face, faces, think, our names. I think it's just an important point just to make, that uh, the aim of this project is, is uh, as with musicians or project, to make it uh, self-sustainable. So all the elements of Hami should go after the program is gone. Uh, it should be continued. That's simply. And, and, and uh, the answer brainstorm with us, because we are connecting dots still. Thank you, my lovely Thank team. You. Thank you. Enjoy Ment. By the way, Ment will be sponsored by Hemi and partnership with Hemi. Thanks to Sigic. Thanks to everyone. So yes, what Martin said, you will have in Slovenia and hopefully all the countries that are here represented, each of us are representing Hemi. We don't keep it for our organization, just to make it clear. Thank you. Thank you.